all right everyone welcome back to the channel um this video is going to be uh focusing on the front knuckles uh and hub bearing assembly right here i have the left side it's already sort of finished i would still need to get this installed onto the car so then i can uh bolt it down uh properly and then uh nick the nick the nut there so it'll secure it in place and then get it onto the car but i'll just quickly demonstrate how to get it from this to this um if you have the hub and the knuckle already off of the car then uh to do this it'll be pretty simple it'll be a little bit e uh, easier if it was actually on the car but if you have it off i can show you a few tools that i used uh to get it off um, now, if you're going to use a socket wrench, it's advisable that the knuckle is still on the car. Unfortunately, I had mine off, but I have a impact gun, so that helped a lot. So here are some basic tools that I used, at least me, to get this job done. Um, you're going to want for the center nut a one and one eighths right there. I don't know what size socket is in millimeters. A hammer, a flat head, ideally an impact wrench, but if you don't have one of these, you can get away with a with one of these um a socket wrench. It will be a little bit harder and if you want to get the final torque, uh, ideally you'd want a, a torque wrench and have it already installed on the car. So I have the left side already uh, semi-finished. It's not torqued all the way. Like I mentioned, I have to nick the nut so that it'll stay secured onto the spindle. But just for references, I'm going to pretend that this is an old one and then demonstrate the installation and then show you the final product. So let's pretend that this is your knuckle. Rather, it's installed on the car or it's removed off. And then so you have your knuckle. You have your hub and the bearing should already be inside the hub and then you have the dust cap. Uh, it should be pressed in. Let's pretend that this is the old one. You're going to get uh, a flat head and a hammer. You're going to go into the lip and then you're going to punch it out. I destroyed mine so I had to order a new cap but this lip is going to be all the way pressed down to the bore of the hub. So you'll want to get a f this flat head with the hammer. Just tap it a few times until it pops out. You could reuse the old one. Um, I suggest you probably try to find like a good pair of used ones that haven't been torn up. Or even get some new ones off of eBay. They're not really that expensive. Once you have the cap off, you'll have your, your nut exposed. Then you'll want to grab your one and one eighths. And if the hub is on the car, it'll be easier if um it'll be easier to use the the socket wrench. But uh you might risk having the hub spin around with it. So if the car's lifted in the air, you might want to use an impact wrench. But if the car is suspended on, uh, I mean, if the car is on the floor uh, with the front wheel onto the ground completely, the car is on its full weight, then you could you could get away using the the socket wrench and probably use like a breaker bar or like an extension bar and kind of break the torque so that you can unscrew it. After removing the center nut, you should be able to uh, give it a little of a wiggle and it should slide right off and then it should look like this make sure that you clean around the spindle uh, if it's got a little bit of corrosion you can get like um, 800 a thousand uh, sandpaper or even a, a scuffing pad and just scuff it through to smoothen the surface and then just put a little bit of like uh, installation uh, lube just to get it to sit in good. Now, a lot of the front hubs, 
because uh, especially on rear-wheel drive cars like the Miata, they don't pull from the front, so they just have a spindle like this, um, and the bearings usually pressed inside. For some reason, I mean, I know I deleted the the ABS, but I bought some non-ABS ones, and they just didn't fit. I don't know why. It was a really tight fit, and the hub wasn't spinning, so I had to remove it and order um, <clears throat> hubs for a ABS uh, model. I mm, don't know if it's just a one-off with mine. Most people say they're interchangeable. Uh, I, I just, it wasn't working for me. So I had to order these. Um, I don't know if the spline here on a non-ABS knuckle is a little bit thicker. I don't know if uh, I was just having a, a bad hub, but um, yeah, I had to get them. But anyways, with or without ABS, it should look something like this. The bearings are already pressed inside, so it saves you some trouble. Make sure to get a little bit of assembly lube in between the racers. Then you'll want to wiggle it in until it falls in there you see it should fall in just like that if it gives you some sort of resistance you can get a rubber mallet and slightly tap it in until it falls in but it should go easily in i'm going to use my old nut for reference but you'll want to get your new nut and then screw it onto place and then once your knuckles assembled and you have the nut uh, torque down to spec. Ideally, you'll want to torque it to spec once the knuckle is actually onto the car. That way you can be able to torque it and it won't spin and then you can nick the, nick the nut and secure it to the, to the, sp the spline and then you can put your cap on in the end. You can run it without the cap. I don't suggest you doing that because then uh, you can get dust and debris and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll do premature wear and tear onto the hub and the bearing and you'll have to do, uh, do it all over again and that's a lot of money that you spend. So with a flat head, you'll wanna go against the groove of, of the spindle and then use a hammer and hammer it in until you nick and bend the nut physically bend it until it's going into the groove it doesn't have to be deep and all the way just just enough to get it to grab hold this is you'll do this step right after you lock that nut um to torque spec grab your new or used cap place it over and using a rubber mallet you can Lightly tap it in until it's sealed. And that should roughly look like the final product. It's really simple, really easy, a lot easier than the rear. Um, I don't know why that is, but I know that the front is very finicky. It's got a bunch of um, ball joints and, they're, and cotter pins and stuff, and they're pretty difficult to work with at times. But there you have it. This video was just uh, a little short, you know, how to on doing the front knuckle and the hubs with the bearings. And then the new one, you can just put it back in. Like I said, once you put the new one in, you want to clean it. Make sure that you get a scuff pad and like go around it. Get your mind off the gutter. Uh, just go around it and then like uh, smoothen the edges, wipe it down, put some assembly loop uh, onto the spindle and a little bit into the inner racers of the bear of the bearing that's already impressed inside the hub and it'll just slide in you already saw how it did it and it had no assembly loop so with assembly loop it should do just fine and that's it thank you guys for watching um i just wanted to get a video out there on how to do the front knuckle and hub bearing assembly the next video will be on getting them installed onto the car so on the left side i already have the lower control arm semi installed it's just um it's not really tightened there i just placed the 
the alignment bolt and just got it there just to see how it looks. Um, I will be assembling the left side like I explained before and demonstrate to you guys in video how to do it on the right side because the left side and the right side are basically the same. There's absolutely no difference except that one's left, one's right. Start finishing on the left, I'll document on the right side. That way you guys could continue seeing the progress of the car. But that should do it. Um, I'm just waiting for the upper and lower ball joints to come in. I won't be doing the steering rack yet because that will be for a different part of the car's restoration. So I'll leave those for another time. But yeah, I just need the upper and lower ball joints with the collar pins and stuff so I can do the whole assembly of the front. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and stay safe.